Hey there, it's Cooper Codes. In this video, I'm going to create an Auth0 account and set it up with the initial data you need to run in your React app. We're going to create login and logout routes with Auth0 and then be able to show in the end Auth0 user information after they've been successfully logged in. Let's get into it. Before getting into the actual React code, I'm assuming a lot of the people watching this are maybe on the fence about using Auth0 or not. So I'm just going to go through a couple of slides talking about why I use Auth0, what is it, and why I like to use Auth0 myself. Authentication is complicated. Just because you're a full stack developer, just because you're a backend developer, doesn't require you to understand authentication. There are so many different things to backend. Distributed systems, like high throughput APIs, all different types of things that are not authentication specifically. And so it's okay to understand that authentication is a complicated thing that, you know, there's a reason why Auth0 and products like it exist is because it wants to simplify this more complicated process, even for developers. Your time might be more valuable developing other features in your application that aren't authentication, especially if you want to build something fast. And so that's important to understand when picking up something like Auth0. And finally, you want a scalable authentication system that is reliable and secure. You know that with Auth0, you're sending requests to an API, their API, to log in and log out. They can scale like infinitely. It's kind of their whole appeals. They have infinite scale. If your website blows up overnight, you can at least know that your authentication system is going to be secure. So what are the cons of Auth0? The first obvious one that always comes up is that it's kind of expensive. 228 a month for the 10,000 monthly active users for the essentials package. And if you need some more stuff, it's gonna be 1500 a month for the professional package. Kind of pricey is all I really have to say about that. And it's a less customizable auth system than creating your own. There are things built into Auth0 that make you customize the auth system to an extent, but compared to creating your own, you really can't beat that as far as customizability goes. So why do I like Auth0 so much? It allows you to create secure MVPs efficiently. If you don't know what an MVP is, it's a minimum viable product. You don't have to create a whole authentication system. You don't have to do any of that. It's all built for you and it allows you to build secure web applications that can scale. You don't have to rebuild your you know, authentication system once your website blows up, for example. You can create those type of applications with Auth0 efficiently. There's also no need for a security engineer for authentication. You might have to hire like a pen tester. You might have to hire someone who's specifically aware of authentication systems in general. $220 a month looks expensive, but you start to look at decent caliber engineers on like something like Upwork, for example. You're looking at 50 an hour plus, and that might even be on the lower end. It's kind of important to understand that we're in a market where good quality engineers are going to be pricey. And I think it's definitely important to consider that when you look at the number 228 a month, for example. And Auth0 is easy to use is one of the main things I like about it. And I will show you how easy it is to use throughout building the React app we're going to get into now. All right, so before getting into any code, we're going to want to go to Auth0.com and then sign up with an account, you know, just how you'd sign up with anything else. So I'm going to use Google account, but this part honestly doesn't even matter. Okay, so when you log in for the first time, you should be put to this getting started page. And this is your whole Auth0 everything. So everything you really need access to on the left here is going to be here. This is how you access Auth0 and manage your applications. So speaking of managing applications, we can press applications here. Then you want to press this applications again. And then you want to create an application. So press this create application here. We are going to be using React, which is a single page web app. So we're going to go right here. It even uses React as an example here. I'm going to call this Cooper Codes app and press create. You're going to want to press on the settings button here at the top of your application. And you're going to want to go down to the URLs, the application URIs here, HTTP slash slash localhost 3000 like this. This is the root URL to your React application that we're going to be testing on. So it has to be under your callback URLs, your logout URLs, and then your allowed web origin. So these all should be localhost 3000. And you can keep everything else the same. Make sure you go down to the bottom and press save changes. This is super important for making sure this works. If you don't press save changes, it's going to be like, where are these requests coming from? We don't want requests from anywhere. We want them only from localhost 3000, for example. You're now going to want to go to connections. By default, it shows me the username password authentication database and then the Google OAuth 2 down here. I'm just going to enable both of these. Enabling these connections means that in my Auth0, it's going to have the option to log in with a regular username and password, which is the one right here, or log in using Google. And so it's giving the user two different options to log in. There are ways to connect more social things. There are even ways to connect more databases, for example. By default, 
it's just going to have these two. And if Google isn't showing up for you by default, don't worry about that. You can just do the regular username password database. Okay, so now that we have our application ready to go with the correct URI links where they need to be, we can create our React app. Make sure to keep this open though, because we're going to need some information from our application in a second here. Open up an empty folder and then bring up a terminal in that folder. We're going to do the regular npx create dash react app. I'm going to name it client. This is the same normal thing for creating a regular react app. Nothing specific to auth zero for now. All right. So once that's done, we can CD into our client and you're going to see we have our full react application as you'd expect. Now we are going to NPM install the software development kit specific for auth zero on react. We can do that by saying NPM install at auth zero slash auth zero dash react. Auth0 is super React friendly. They have a lot of things that are specific to React and they even give us a React hook to use Auth0 throughout our application. So they make the process very simple. In your React application, go to the source folder and then go to index.js. We are going to create something now called a provider for Auth0. So we can do this by saying import Auth0 provider from that Auth0 React library we just installed. So what the provider is doing is it's going to give our React application the entire thing access to all the Auth0 variables or Auth0 properties and needs. So we can take this provider and we can initialize it by wrapping it around our entire React application like this. The provider itself is going to need a couple of properties. So we can start initializing these in here. It's going to need a domain property, which I'm going to set all these to an empty string initially. It's going to need a client ID. I can make that an empty string again. And it's going to need a redirect URI, which in the documentation, they recommend just to say window location origin for now. You can change this later, but this makes the most sense for our situation where we just want a basic initial boilerplate. And so this domain and client ID are actually initialized in your Auth0 interface. So let's go back to our Auth0 interface here. We can go to settings. And so in settings, you're going to have your domain here and your client ID here. So you're going to want to copy the domain here paste it right there. Now you're going to have access to your domain in your Auth0 provider. Copy your client ID here and then set it equal to the string here. This is pretty much telling your React application that it needs to use this domain and this client ID to talk with Auth0. So getting these correct is super important. So I'm going to make a components folder now. I'm making this components folder because we're going to need three different components. We are going to need a component for the Auth0 login button. So I'm going to say login button.js. And we're also going to need a component for the logout button.js. And then another component for the user's profile. The user profile is data that Auth0 saves automatically so we can see if we are logged in or not for a certain user. So let's start with the login button. We're going to import the React hook use Auth0 from that Auth0 React library we installed. This is a hook that gives us access to a bunch of Auth0 properties. So I'm going to make this a functional component called login button. And just because I think it makes the most sense, we can do the export default now. So export default login button. Now we have our kind of boilerplate functional component there. And so we're going to want to get one of these functions out of Auth0 called login with redirect. And use Auth0 is a hook, which pretty much means it's a function. Our hooks aren't exactly functions, but they give us access to functionality. And I'll show you guys right now. If I scroll over this use Auth0, VS Code kind of helps me out and it says, hey, when we import Auth0, we have access to all these different things. We have access to four things in our state, which is the error, is authenticated, is loading, and user. And then we have access to a bunch of different auth methods, as you can see here. And so we can put whatever we want inside of these curly braces to get access to them. For example, in our case, we want access to login with redirect. And so we can get login with redirect by putting it into the curly braces here. I'm going to return a simple button. So I can just do this return, make a button where when we click the button, it's going to trigger the login with redirect function. What's happening here is we call this login with redirect whenever this button gets clicked. Login with redirect is saying that we are going to redirect the user to the Auth0 login web page, and then they're going to log in from there. There's also login with pop-up, I believe, if you want to use that instead. But for this tutorial, I'm going to use the redirect. And this is all we need for the login button. So let's get started on the logout button. Let's go and copy our whole login button.js just because it's going to use a lot of the same code. So we can copy over the login button 
paste it in our logout button so we save us some time. Change the name of the component to logout button and then make sure you export the default logout button. So instead of getting the login with redirect function out of the auth0, we can see we can get access to the logout function, for example. And so we can get access to it by doing this. There we go, we have access to logout now. And so when we click this button, we actually want to log out. Logout takes per some parameters though, and it takes a return to option. And we're just going to make a return to the window.location.origin. And then we're gonna change the name of the text to log out. This is all we really need for the component is it's very simple. And this is kind of why Auth0 is so helpful is everything is happening in the backend with the Auth0 functionality. And so let's just copy over the logout button and bring it over to our user profile. This is just so we don't have to do the import again. And we're going to then change this to user profile, export default user profile. And in this auth0 hook here, we are going to be getting some different things out of the actual auth0 part. So now we want to get a couple different properties. You'll see we have access to a user, the logged in user, if they're authenticated and if the user is loading, for example. And so we can get access to those by literally just going in here and saying user is authenticated and then is loading. Now we have access to these three things coming from Auth0. I'm kind of going with the flow of the documentation here. And so what they do is they say, if the component is loading, they instead want to show a div that we are waiting on the information to load. So we can say return div and just say loading with an exclamation point. <laughs> and if we get past this, that means loading is false and we have access to our, or we might have access to our user. And so instead we can go down here and say return is authenticated, just checking if they're authenticated. Then we can use these ampersands to say, if they're authenticated, we want to show data from that user, for example. And so we can make a div here and say, hey, take the image source equal to user.picture. And so there are a lot of properties associated with users in Auth0. Um, you can look at, you know, look up like Auth0 user documentation or just console.log user to see the different things you have access to when it comes to users. But user.picture is one, which we can close up by doing this. And then the user is also going to have a user.name and they're also going to have a user.email, for example. And this is our full user profile component. This is going to be a helpful component because it's going to show in our front end if we actually have data coming from Auth0 or not. Now we have the three components we need to show the functionality working. So let's import those in our app.js file. So we're going to import the login button from component slash login button. We're also going to import the log out button. And then finally, we are going to import that user profile. Right now, our app.js is just showing a basic React boilerplate, so we can get rid of the entire header, just leave us with a div to work with. I'm just going to put these in kind of one after another. So first, I'm going to have the login button, then I'm going to have the logout button, and then I'm going to have a little, maybe like a paragraph saying, the user's information is below. And then I'm going to bring in that user profile. All right, so now we have a pretty much basic React application going with all the necessary components needed for Auth0. We can start our application by making sure you're in client and then saying npm start. All right, so now we have a pretty basic front end working. When we press the login button, you're gonna see that it's going to redirect us to the Auth0 page. I'm going to first show you guys what it looks like to log in with a Google account. So I can go to pretty much any Google account I want, log in, Auth0 has some stuff that they wanna make sure you're okay with accessing. You press accept. And now I'm logged in with Auth0 with my Gmail account, which is super great. Now you're gonna see, this is pretty much saying that our current user is showing the desk spacing at gmail.com account. So now that is our current user and they're fully authenticated. So when we press the logout button, this user is going to get logged out and it's not gonna be authenticated in our application anymore. So if we press log out, you will see that that user property isn't showing anymore in our user profile.js. And so this is pretty great. This is showing you how easy it is to use Auth0. So if you go to Auth0 and then you press on monitoring and then you go to logs, you'll be able to see all the successful logouts, successful logins. This is pretty much showing you the actual API calls, if that makes sense is when we want to log out, we log out by calling Auth0 and that gets logged here. So this is cool because I looked at the activity and it didn't seem to be updating in real time. Like it says I have zero active users, even though I just logged in, for example. And so looking at the monitoring and going to logs is an easy way to see if your code is working in real time. And so one last thing is we can also log in and then create an account by using an email address, for example. So you can log in and create an account just like normal. There's nothing even related to development here. <laughs> okay, and then I can continue. I can press accept and then boom. So now you'll see I actually logged in with my Gmail account, but it's creating a different 
user. I log in with the same Gmail account, it's creating a different user. An idea behind it as to why this is happening is because if you go to the actual application itself, you will see that when we use this database connection, we are going to be working with this database that Auth0 is creating for us. And so we have a database of all the different users in here. This social down here is actually a different connection. So imagine it as an entirely different way to get into your application. All right, so this is super great because it's showing how we can log in with an account and it's going to create an account in Auth0 and pretty much register using the Auth0 database we have in our connections right here. And then as normal, if you log out, your user will then be logged out. So I know this is kind of a basic introduction to Auth0, but I wanted to make this video because I plan on creating more full applications that use Auth0 for the actual authentication part of the application. And then we use the regular GraphQL, Apollo server, other elements to create other functionality throughout our application. So if you're interested in any of that content, feel free to subscribe and feel free to even watch some of the other Apollo server and GraphQL videos I have on my channel. They should be a great head start in working on creating more full applications, which I plan on releasing in the future. Thanks so much for watching.